Hi guys, Danny's back. After a long start in quantum mechanics, which was my previous video series, we're going to go back into pure mathematics. Our next topic we're going to embark on is called Advanced Differential Calculus. Now, some of you suggested that I started a course on real analysis, but I don't think I'm equipped well enough to handle that. Instead, what we can do in Advanced Differential Calculus is that we're going to go back into Differential Calculus, and this time we're going to look at the notions, concepts, theorems of Differential Calculus with a more precise view. We will see what we currently understand about Differential Calculus and, you know, extract that and extend them to further results. Now, I do hope that you have the prerequisites of, let's just say, uh, partial derivatives, be able to differentiate uh, certain simple functions, uh, product rule, quotient rule, and you know the definition of the derivative so that we can use this as a foundational material and extend these results. Okay, so next topic, advanced differential calculus. Our first lesson is gonna be a review of partial derivatives. Now some of you may already know that, but let's look at it, like I said, in a more precise view and see do we really understand what partial derivatives is about. Now I'm gonna refrain from using the epsilon delta approach, which many undergraduate students fear, but I just hope that with my geometric intuition and some of my analytical arguments, I'm able to pass the lesson or the idea across, okay? Review of partial derivatives. So, what we started out with is um, a function in terms of one variable. Now, when we go into partial derivatives, we're dealing with function in terms of two variables. So, now I have a function, okay, f in terms of x and y. Okay, so what I write is that z, the dependent variables, is equal to a function applied to two independent variables. Okay, x and y are the independent variables because they are able to vary independently. And it's divided in the domain of d of the xy plane. Now, no surprise about that, it's an xy plane because the two independent variables are x and y. They're independent, but they're independent because I can pick a certain value of x, I pick a certain value of y, put it inside the function, and I get a certain value of z. Okay, so what I will do now is that I want to somehow, you know, find the derivative of z, okay, or it's also the same as finding the derivative of the function f. I let a point, okay, be x1, y1 in the, in the d, okay, d is the domain. Now, what we know, what we currently know is the definition of the derivative, our ideas of differential calculus in terms of one variable. So, we need to really limit ourselves from that or use that as a starting point to progress further. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to fix one of the variables over here. The variable we're going to fix is y. So, what I say is that y is equal to y1. When I do that, I'm left with this function over here. Now, as you can see that this function is really a uh, function f applied to x and y1, but now it varies in terms of one variable, okay? It depends on x only. Okay, varies in terms of x only. Like I say again, the variable that we fix is y1. So the derivative with respect to x may exist. Okay, just treat it as a normal function in terms of one variable. Now when that happens, what I say is that the partial derivative with respect to x at x1, y1 is denoted by this thing over here. Okay, now this looks vaguely simi similar to the definition of the derivative that you have studied in one-dimensional differential calculus. The only exception is that we have this y1 over here, okay? Now, it shouldn't be any surprise because we started as a function in terms of two variables. Like I said, we want to strip ourselves in terms of, uh, let a function vary in terms of one variable. We do that by fixing y, y is equal to y1, and I'm just applying the basic rules of differential calculus. Now, there's a small change in x, okay, and that will correspond to a change in z, right? The change is that is given by applying the function to x1, which is the point I'm talking about, x1 plus the small change in delta x, and I'll minus that by the function applied to x1. Well, in both cases, I also, you know, just put the value of y1 inside, but I just want to stress that now, you know, since we fix y as y1, it becomes a function of one variable. Now, when we do that, we let delta x equals to zero, we get the partial derivative, and we call that partial f, partial x. Okay, partial f because like the function is f. Now notice that we have used this curly d over here, this curly delta, as opposed to the, the straight d uh, in normal differential calculus. Now yes, technically this function is in terms of one variable, so we can just differentiate with respect to x. But we need to write this curly delta, okay, this curly delta over here, to say that this function f is in terms of two variables, but we write curly delta, we're taking the partial derivative, and we're going to fix one of them fixed, which is y fixed as y1, okay? We call it as partial f, partial x, okay? There are ways to denote this, okay? And we can use uh, basically partial z, partial x, okay? Because, you know, the, the dependent variable z, or we will write the dependent variable z with a small subscript x, saying that we are partial differentiating with respect to x, okay? Or the function there, put an x over here, or one, because sometimes the variables are one, two, three, okay? And if more specifically, if we were to evaluate the partial derivative, okay, at the point x1, y1, we'll just put, uh, you know, uh, z, okay, z uh, subscript x uh, bracket x1, y1, to so say by everything over there. 
So what does this mean geometrically? Okay, now some of you may already know. Okay, but let's just um, go through what it means. Now, if I were to fix y1, okay, oh sorry, okay, first and foremost, let's just uh, set it straight that when we have this thing over here, the dependent variable z is equal to a function applied to x and y, we're actually dealing with a surface. Okay, I hope you spot that right from the start. It's dealing as a surface over here. Now it becomes more clear because if I pick a value of x and y, I get a certain value on the surface. The certain value on the surface gives me that z value. Okay, so you know three variables. Okay, z, x, and y will have a surface over here. Okay. The function, for example, let's just use z is equals to 5 plus x squared minus y squared. Now, if I have to fix the uh, one of the independent variables y, okay, y1, what am I actually doing to it geometrically? Have a think about it. Y, is, y equals to y1 can be represented in this three-dimensional space as a plane, okay, which is parallel to the x-axis, okay? As you can see over here, the plane we're talking about is that over there, okay? So this is why now if you donate this value over here as y1, this is the plane that we have. Now when we pass this plane over the surface and when they intersect, notice what we get. We get a curve. Okay, we no longer get a surface, we get a curve. And you know, for you know um, geometric drawing sake, the curve is given by this over here. Okay, the curve is given by that over there. Now, what is the function that defines this curve? This function that defines this curve is none other than this function over here. Okay, it's just simply the function, okay, to apply to x and y, but now you just put a certain value of y. So let's just say y1 is 2, I'm basically putting 2 over there. Okay, so 2, that'd be 5 minus 4, would be 1 plus x squared. That is the function of the curve over here. And when I take the partial derivative with respect to x, what I'm getting is that I'm getting the slope of the tangent of that curve. Okay, let's draw that as this over here. So we'll pass a line, okay, this line denotes um, as x, okay, the x-axis, okay, uh, maybe just shift it over there, the curve, and I get the tangent of the slope, okay, as you can see, this angle, we don't know this angle is alpha, and then the tangent of the, of, sorry, the, yeah, the slope of the tangent, I mean that, the slope of the tangent is equal to tangent alpha, okay, and this is given by that partial derivative over there. What you're trying to do is that look at that and use one dimensional calculus and analyze it. Now we're fixing y, y equals to y1, we pass the plane, and then when the plane comes to surface, we get our usual curve that we always handle in one dimensional calculus. Okay, delta x is given by that over there. We shrink the delta x smaller. Okay, I'm just comparing the distance between the change in z, which is that over there, to a change in uh, x, okay, which is that over there. And when I let x tends towards zero, I move closer to the tangent, okay, or the point of where the tangent is, and that would give me the slope. Okay, it's also given by the tangent of alpha, okay, which alpha is the angle marked over here. So that is what it geometrically means. Okay, we are fixing one of the variables that is saying passing a plane. Okay, where it intersects the surface, okay, because we are dealing with a function in terms of two variables, and then when I take the partial derivative with respect to a certain variable, in this case x, I get the tangent, okay, the slope of the tangent at that point over there. Now, I also want to say that we can also do that, you know, take partial der derivatives with respect to y, okay. Now, when we do that, we get this thing over here, just again applying the definition in terms of our one dimensional calculus, but this time we're going to fix x1. Okay, so we're going to fix x, so x is equal to x1. So as you can see, now I'm just basically applying the function to y1 plus delta y, okay, subtract y1. And then as you can see over here, now what we're doing is that, let's just say we fix it at y1, I'm passing the plane x equals to, sorry, now we're going to fix it as x1, I'm passing the plane x is equals to x1, where it cuts the surface, I get a certain curve, which is, let's just draw this as over there. Okay, and then this would give me the slope of the tangent evaluated at a certain point of that curve. Okay, and as you can see now, this curve is, is varies, okay, um, sorry, the z value will vary as I change the y value, okay, because now I'm fixing x1. So I'm changing the y value, that's why I'm taking partial derivatives with respect to y, okay, and then the tangent is given by that over there. There we go, okay, now, so what we can do now is that let's just say now the point x1 and y1 is now varied, okay, so what we did over here is that we fixed y1. Okay, we fix y, so we vary x. What we did over here is we fix x, we vary y. But if we were to vary the point x1, y1, okay, we are able to obtain partial derivatives with respect to either variable. That is, the variable x or the variable y. And when I do that, what I would have is that I have the function, okay, f subscript x, which is saying taking the partial derivative 
with respect to x or the function f such with y taking the partial derivatives with respect to y. Now I'm pointing this out to you because now unlike one dimensional calculus where we've got a function uh, y in terms of x, okay, we can only differentiate with respect to x. But then now when we start a function in terms of two variables, we can differentiate two ways either with respect to x or with respect to y. The definitions are over here and the geometrical interpretations are over there. That's what it means.